We just got kind of a frantic phone call from an owner. I don't know if it's a total 911, but we're gonna scurry downtown and take a look. And he says his boat's taking on water. He said maybe five gallons, but I'm not exactly sure how fast that's coming in. And I'm not even sure where it's leaking from. Well, I told you about this beauty getting hauled out a couple weeks ago. It was down at the dock and uh, Matt and I missed it because we were out of town, but we've got the guys working on it and we are removing the shaft seals. This is a beautiful boat, but boy, man, look at the blue. It's so oxidized. We're focusing on what needs to be repaired at hand today to get him back on the water, but it could look beautiful if he got the sides of the hull done. We're doing a new bottom for him, so he'll be looking much better. Well, looks like Tom got the bottom all sanded over here and the boat's been washed. We're getting ready to apply our first and second coat of paint. We also need Tom to do zincs. So let's do a quick recap. Uh, we did find that both rudders are leaking and we are currently dropping the rudders and we're gonna take the lock nuts off of the, the uh, rudder glands and replace that those seals in there. Then the props are at prop dock and we're waiting for those. And then we have a fuel leak in there that we discovered that I have to talk to the client and uh, we'll have to address that. We're making progress. I'm hoping uh, mid to next, late next week, we'll be putting this baby back in the water. Hey, I'm curious, does everybody know what a dripless coupling on a boat is? If you know, make a comment. Also, if you don't know, make a comment and I'll maybe do a video or I'll comment back to you and to explain to you the different types and styles that are available. Does anybody out there have a favorite style or brand? I'd like to know mostly one style, but I don't want to tell you what that is until you guys tell me what you think. Okay, we're, you can see we've got the new dripless system in. This is the PSS PYI and you can see that we're making some adjustments. It's tight fit. We're trying to get there. Man, not a lot of room to work in here. I don't know if you can even see this, it's crazy. Stuck down here between two engines and I'm working up underneath here. Chris, pull it back. Hold on. Pull it back. Hold it. All right, we got that popped off and we're gonna get that alignment done and put that back together. Like I said, you can see the space in here is crazy. And then it comes back through, it come, the shaft comes back through here, through this plate. And then another one mounts on the front to hold the shaft. Yeah, it's all good. Let me show you what else we did in here. These uh, tripless rudder tube seals, they're seals that go in here. And we had to change them because both sides were leaking. So we adjusted them and got them back and replaced them. I'll show you what the gasket material looks like here in a minute. So I mentioned when I was on the boat about we repacked both rudder tubes and put new seals in. So I wanted to show you guys really quick what that's all about. So in an older boat, you're gonna have this kind of, this is the old seal that was in there and they were both leaking. So we took them apart and changed them out. This is what the new stuff looks like. It comes in different sizes, big, small, medium, whatever size you need. So what you do is you take three pieces of this and you cut it with a razor blade at a 45 and then the big gland nut that sits up on there you put three pieces in and what you do is you make sure your 45 is meeting squarely this is not square but you make sure that it's mated together so there's no opening and then what you do is you take the next piece you put that say it's six o'clock or that's nine o'clock let's call that nine o'clock the next piece would then go so the idea is to stagger them so that all the pieces where the cuts are, are not stacked up like that. And like I said, you do three pieces high and you pack that in there and then you, you snug that down. And what we'll do is when we put the boat in the water, we'll check for leakage. And what you can do is if this does start to leak over time, because you know the rudder's in here and it's turning and it wears on this, you can actually break the lock nut free, tighten the gland nut down, which then compresses the seal a little more 
and causes it to bulge out and it'll 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 lock it up again and make another a new like making a new seal but you can only do that so many times before you have to replace it so tell us about the wear on here so you can see this one has been in there for years probably since the boat was new and it's super hard where this is kind of soft and squishy you can see how it's thinner so that's why it was leaking and we couldn't adjust it down anymore to keep it from leaking but those are both done the rudders are in that all looks pretty good and um, we get these two dripless done port and starboard and then uh, tom's painting the outside and we're pretty much done we're looking good so we're back today to finish up this diesel leak repair let's go get this done and then we got a uh, steering leak to look at Went to the store last night and picked up some new fittings for this. I already took it apart. One of the fittings was a little sketchy to me. The threads didn't look quite right. So I just called the owner and said, hey, listen, man, since I already got it apart, let me spend, you know, what is it, 30 bucks maybe to get the parts and replace it. So I did. And that just goes into this T-fitting and then it hooks up to this line right here. We'll get done. We'll open the valves all up and um, we we'll probably have to run the engines and see how that works. Make sure that uh, the engine doesn't need any blood. All right, we got that all put together and cleaned up. Uh, I'll probably bring some acetone and wipe that down later, but we're gonna let it cure first. I open the valve up, open all these valves up. These all feed the generators and tanks and things of that nature. We gotta open that. So we're gonna we're gonna prime the system. So this comes from the tank, goes into here, and then we're gonna go close this and we're gonna open this. And that pump when I turn it on should pump everything into here which then will go to the engine which is right here so let's see what happens here i don't know if this is on nope i gotta go turn the breaker on where's the fuel prime pump fuel prime pump on there it is right there oops now let's see So now what should be happening is it's going to pick up fuel from here and I got that valve open. It's pumping in this direction. This valve is closed. That's for the other engine. So if I crack that, you'll see. Yep. So that's for the other engine. Then this goes down here. I close this off. This is the main pickup. This is pumping in through here, out through here. We've got 25 inches of pressure and it's going to the engine and once it goes to the engine, whatever the engine doesn't use, which is nothing right now, it will pump that back into the vent, into the tank, because diesel engines take more fuel than they need to burn. Should be good there. Let's close that off, shut that off, close that, open that. And now we're good going to the main tank. So I'm gonna call the owner and see if he wants me to start the port engine. And I don't see any leaks down here. Wrap that in a diaper with a little piece of tape on it. And then I'm gonna cut a little piece off of here and tape it around that fitting, because that way, even if it's seeping, we will know. So in a couple days, we can just look at that diaper material and if it's got any pink on it, we know it's still leaking. Replace the strainer on this boat. So I just close that through all. Now I'm gonna close these because that'll keep any water from backflowing. Okay, let me take our little spanner wrench. Put it in the holes. See if we can get it in there. There we go. Couldn't they give me one more inch, huh? Yeah, so I was working on this boat yesterday and uh, happened to notice the condition of this uh, strainer. You can see it's got holes all blown in it from corrosion and then the bottom is busted out. So uh, I picked one up last night. 
brand new. And we'll just put that in there. I know it's supposed to be hand tight, but I always give them just a little bit more. That's it, not much. Open the through hole back up. Open our valves back up. Back in here. Now we can turn on our air conditioning units and our pump. Let's go check the units. All right, all right. That one's done. So today on this boat, we got the fuel system fixed up and then I ran the engine that checked all good I think I forgot to show you guys running the engine um, sorry about that then I um, serviced the steering reservoir and I didn't find any leaks really so I put some new diapers underneath all the steering gear in the back that's the reservoir and I serviced it up it was a little low not too bad though and then these are the steering cylinders so I didn't find really any leaks I touched them underneath here to see if they were dribbling but I didn't find any, so I just checked all the fittings. They're all good. Though I don't know, maybe one of the helms is, he's got two helms. Maybe one of the helms is seeping oil a little bit, or maybe the autopilot is. But uh, we'll just keep an eye on these diapers. It'll tell us if anything's leaking. I put the strainer in on the air conditioning. You guys saw that? All right. Well, that should be it on this boat, hopefully. We'll see what the owner has to say. All right, we're here, Prop Doc's office, and we're gonna go pay for some props and um, pick them up and drop them back at the boat. So we just picked up a couple props and they're all pretty and shiny. We had them balanced and reconditioned because they were out of whack. When we dropped them off, we had Dan the prop doc, put them on a diameter and they spin it and they find out if it's out of balance. And what they do is they figure out it's out of balance and the computer tells them what to bend and where to add and stuff like that. And both these were out of whack. And the reason why you want to keep your props tuned up and balanced is because if you start having vibration, it runs up through the prop shaft, it'll wear out your cutlass bearing and your strut, and then it'll get up where it feeds into the transmission and wear the bearings out because it all starts wobbling. And then you'll also feel it in your feet on, when you're driving the boat. And as the boat, if you run it for a long time with props that are out of balance and it's shaking the boat, everything in the boat will start coming loose, all the screws, all, everything. So that's why we like to keep these uh, cleaned up and balanced. So Antonio just set down his little device here. So I'm going to come over here and show you guys. This is what he uses to lift up and control the boats. Pretty cool, huh? He does all that remotely. Yeah, he's just touching up the paint on the bottom so that we can start moving it over to the haul out. We finished up all our work on this one and it's going back in the water. A quick sea trial and hopefully it'll be on its way. I think it's an 11 hour trip up to Tampa. So I don't know who's taking it. I guess maybe that captain is, but once it's out of my hair, I'll be happy.